10 massive wealth indicators from your D10 chart, not D1. There's a chart called D10, which is the Dashamsha chart, which is like zooming into your 10th house, which is the house of your profession. Like there is a D9 chart for your spiritual life and marriage. Similarly, there is a chart for your career. So don't not see that chart. <laughs> don't ignore it. Okay. So today we shall discuss 10 clues for massive wealth now. To have them, you need to have massive wealth. You need to have at least whatever more the better, but at least four, five, or six, seven, right? At least four or five should be there, and it should be there in good, good play, good dignity. Okay, we'll discuss about that. But if you have like you know only one or two or three, then also you will have wealth, uh, but it will be like average or could be a bit above average. If you have four, it could be above average. If you have five, then considerably above average and if you have six seven eight oof then that's it you are very wealthy and these have to also be seen in the d1 chart i've already made many videos on massive wealth from the d1 so don't forget to see that but once assuming you have seen that now we go to the d10 chart all right if you're new don't forget to subscribe and for personalized consultations you can always go to my website down below in the description section Strong placement of the 10th Lord of your D1 chart in the D10. Should I be strong placement of the 10th Lord of your D1 chart in the D10 chart? Okay. Very, very, very important. So, if the 10th Lord of your D1 chart, not D10, D1 chart, if it is exalted or in Raj Yog or Mahapurush Yog or it is you know in some kind of you uh, special position like Digbal, then you are really a pioneer. You will do something massive, okay? Like, for example, yeah, you are Cancer Lagna, and who's the 10th Lord? Mars in your D1 chart. And then Mars in the Dashamsha is sitting in the 10th house, so it's in Digbal, right? So then this means you will make a lot of wealth by starting something new. So you are a businessman, you are you are doing something which nobody has done, okay? Or which very less people do. Number two, benefic planets in the 10th house in your Dashamsha chart, but well supported or in good dignity. So, who are the natural benefics? Jupiter, Mercury, Venus, and Moon also. So, if these four, or, you know, of course, it's very difficult that, you know, four planets, all the four benefics will be there. But in case, if you have them, or at least one or two, then you can really have wealth. But this is not more an uh, indication of wealth, but this is more of an indication of awards and recognitions. Okay, and wealth comes along with that. So if you have Jupiter, Venus, especially in the 10th house of your D10 chart, ooh, you can get awards right and left, all right? So that's the beauty of this. Now, number three, if your Lagna Lord of D10 Lagna Lord, this time of D10, not the D1 chart. If that is associating itself with the 10th house or the 11th house. So, the Lagna Lord of your D10 is in the 10th or 11th or the 10th or 11th Lord of the of the Dashamsha chart is in the Lagna or the Dashamsha. Then it shows massive name fame is coming to you and with that wealth comes. All right. So, I'm explaining what every position does so that you need to understand what happens. Okay. It's not like Black and white, oh, this happens, you get money. How you get money, that also I'm explaining. Now, number four is very, very, very important. If you have this, then you are really blessed, okay? A very strong 11th house in the D10. Now, I've already said that if your Lagnesh of D10 is associated with 11, then it's great. But suppose you don't have that, then if you have this, you know, 11th Lord, very, very strong, then also you are very blessed because then money will come to you automatically. You don't have to do anything. So that's the benefit of having this, okay? So then this means you, uh, yeah, you can just uh, maybe sit and do nothing. <laughs> Certainly not. You will do, but you will be very sharp. You, you can identify, you know, where the money is and, you know, you can like go and grab. So any new thing you see, you are very expert in grabbing the money, okay? Now, 
Number five, if there are, if there is an uh, inter uh, co conjunction or exchange, okay, parivartan of the lords of the second, sixth, tenth, and eleventh, somewhere. So, like for example, second lord is in eleventh, no, tenth lord is in eleventh, or either of these. So, if the exchange is occurring. The lords of these houses are sitting in each other's houses. Then this is a combination of massive wealth. Actually, this is a combination of multiple sources of income. Okay, <clears throat> so you will have many sources of income. So it's like saying uh, tenth lord is in the eleventh. Many, many, many sources. So two, three, four, five, six sources. Okay, and this becomes very important uh, in twenty twenty four because nowadays you know people are having more than one source of income. Okay, so if you have this, you are really blessed. Okay, number six. Most important, great Mercury in the horoscope. Fantastic. This is Mercury is the Karaka for the 10th house. So Mercury becomes very important. So if you have a very strong Mercury in the Dashamsha, you can spot opportunities to earn money. It's like the 11th house. So you can exactly know, you can kind of foresee, you get like a vision. Okay, this sector will increase. I should go there. I should make money there. You know, whatever it is, you know, Health, sports, AI, IT, medical, whatever. I mean, you know I'm good at this and you are constantly working to improve yourself, okay? <clears throat> now, this also helps you if you have a great mercury in D1, but a great mercury in D1 can give you, you know, like general intelligence, okay? You, you are smart, but if mercury is great in the D10, it will give you smartness in your profession, Okay. And you can talk, you can communicate, you can sell. You are an extremely good salesman, okay, if Mercury is well placed. Now, number seven, uh, great Raj Yogas okay, in the D10. This also helps if it is in D1, but specifically in D10. Now, what is a Raj Yoga? If there is a Kendra and a Trikona Lord in exchange, so suppose fifth Lord is in 10th or, you know, 10th Lord is in 9th or whatever. Kendra and Trikon Lords are in exchange. But among these, the 5th, ninth, and the 10th, these three are most powerful. So if there is a Raj Yoga like this, then wealth comes to you easily because Raj Yoga is like a Lakshmi Narayan Yoga. So there is blessing of Lakshmi Devi, which means your past life karma is there. So now you just go and get it, okay? So it's like saying you apply in a big company and you find some reference, you know, some senior or somebody and then they refer you. So you get easily. So Raj Yoga means you get wealth easily. Okay, that is why it is known as Raj Yoga, which means you are favored by the king, basically. Okay, Raja. Now, number eight, very, very important. Your son should be in a good dignity, preferably in Kendra, best position one or ten, but in a good dignity. If your son is well placed in the D10, then you can become a very big leader in your job, in your circle, in your team, in your company, in your business, in your industry, and you get a lot of respect. Okay, so a strong son uh, will indicate a lot of status in your life, and, and that will bring a lot of wealth. Now, number nine, very, very, very important. Great Saturn, because he is the Atma Karaka for the Dashamsha chart, right? So... If your Saturn is great, you have the capacity to work for very long hours. So you can put in the hard work required. You can put in the effort. You can put, put in the patience that is required. So you become wealthy because hard, hard work plus destiny and hard work in, a, in the right direction along with destiny or destiny's hand, that is success, right? Now, if Saturn is not well placed, suppose your Mercury is very well placed, then what happens? You speak a lot, you are blabbering all the time, you know, oh, you are a great salesman, you know, but then you don't maintain your records, you don't have proper documentation and all this, you know, your profits, business and all this. But if Saturn is well placed and Mercury is badly placed, then you may not be a very good salesman, you know, you may be a bit shy and, you know, may not like to do marketing. But whatever you sell, you will be like, you will know ins and outs of the products, Okay. So therefore, it's a great blessing to have Saturn and Mercury in good dignity. All right. And last but not the least, if you have powerful planets, either in the 3rd, 6th, or 10th, or 11th. Okay. These are Upachya houses, as you know. So these houses improve with time. So these houses are kind of 
they indicate things which you will get but a bit in later stage okay so for example if you have like Saturn in the third or Saturn in the sixth, tenth and eleventh is still great. But if you have in third or sixth, then you will have to work like you know ten years, fifteen years, twenty years, twenty five years, and then later phase, you know, in sixties, seventies, you will become very well because you will be the master of your <coughs> work and craft. Okay, so these placements are fantastic. If you have them, you are really blessed. But suppose you don't have. Then you need to see uh, what is going on in your D10 chart, okay? Well, which planets are in your 8th house? 2nd, 6th, 10th, 11th. Uh, 11th is a Kama house, but it is also the house of wealth. So you need to check which planets are in these houses. And by that, you will exactly know from where the wealth will come, okay? So therefore, check the D1, check the D9, check the D10. And that's how you will know what is going on, okay? So therefore... If you have checked your D1 and D9 and uh, you are confused what to see in the D10, here it is, 10 things which can grant you massive wealth, all right? And also there are other things like if you have Rahu in 10th or 11th, these placements always help, okay? Or, you know, you have Ketu in the 5th or 9th, you know, these are also great placements, okay? So, I can, like, you know, speak 100 more combinations in this video itself, but it will get very long, but I'm interested to know from you, what are some other great placements that you have seen in the Dashamsha which gives you grand wealth, massive wealth? Have you done your research? Have you seen charts of rich people? Well, if not, maybe you should start doing it. <laughs> All right. And if yes, then please don't forget to shoot them in the comments below. All right. Shoot your analysis. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much for your uh, view time. And if you have any questions, please put it down in the comments. And remember one thing at the end, dashas are also important. So, if your dashas are not coming, uh, if your right dashas are not coming, for example, if your son is in the 10th in dashamsha, but the son dasha is not coming in your life, then it can mean that it will not manifest. Okay, that's unfortunate. But it can mean that. Okay, so therefore, you have to know that dashas and transits are also important. So D1, D9, D10, dashas and transits. So all these five have to be combined for your profession, okay? So therefore, please watch my D1 videos, you know, massive wealth videos. Please watch my uh, Navamsha videos, you know, Vishti Narsan, that series. And in my dasha videos and transits. And then you should watch this video. All right. Thank you so much. If you are new, don't forget to subscribe, please. And... For personalized consultations, my website is down below. God is there with you all the time. Just look to him and you will find him. Jai Gopal.